it's Terrell speaking. How can I help you? Hi, this is Trina. My mower's dripping oil something fierce. Can you fix it? Yeah, yeah, we could, we could fix that. Sure. You need us to pick it up? Yeah, come pick it up. Okay. Do you know where I live? I, I know, I know who you are. I know where you live. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Okay, bye. Junior! Got one for you to pick up! Let's see where this thing is dripping from. Ah! Oh, it's just dripping here from this dipstick O-ring. Oh, that's a pretty simple fix. Gotta change this O-ring out. It'll stop dripping. Of my mind. Grass Rats Garage, Terrell Jr. here. How can I help you? Whoa! Calm down, lady. What's the problem? You know that mower you just brought back? Yeah, that mower we just worked on? It's dripping again. Dripping oil again? Yeah. Okay. Come and get it. All right, well, I'll have to come back out there and pick it up again. You did a bad job. All right, calm down. This is ridiculous. We'll make it right. I'll be out there in a little bit. Don't worry. Okay, you better. All right. Okay, bye. Pa, that mower we just worked on. Stripping oil again. I gotta go pick it up. Oh, great. I know I fixed it. All right, I'll be back. Uh. I thought we had this figured out, Pa. Maybe it's stripping from somewhere else. Yeah. Well, it ain't dripping from where I fixed it. I'll have to take another look at it. Yeah, well, you might want to do it now because the woman's pretty upset. Well, I was going to go in the office and play some solitaire, but I guess I'll take another look at it now. Let's see what happens when I jiggle on this. I think you found where it's leaking, Pop. <laughs> Looks good on you. All right, Junior, I think I got it fixed this time. It's been sitting a few hours and it hasn't dripped oil yet. I even took it outside and ran it for a little while. So it should be good to go. So you can take it back to that lady's house. Tell her there's no charge since it was just in here and we fixed that other leak. All right, Pa. No problem. All right, it's all fixed up so you can get that grass cut. Sorry about that. Well, that's fine as long as you made good on it. Because I got a big party coming up and I got to get this grass mowed today. All right, well, have a good day. Oh, oh, I forgot my mowing hat. I got to go get my mowing hat. <gasps> Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this here. Gas-powered one-inch impact wrench. That's right. This is a gas-powered impact wrench for tightening bolts. And from what I understand, the railroads would use these, or people who work building the railroad companies. That way, they can tighten the bolts on the rails without, you know, running an air compressor or whatever. So they pretty much don't use them anymore. Now they use battery powered impact wrenches to tighten everything. So we got some of these and uh, we're gonna see if we can get one running and then we'll uh, try to tighten a bolt with it or something. We'll see. I only got one socket. I don't have any one inch impact sockets because I don't use one inch impacts on lawnmowers. No lawnmower needs anything tightened or loosened with a one inch impact. This ain't the railroad. I'm not Casey Jones. Pterodactyl. Alright, this thing's all dirty. Dusty. So this is how you make it go 
left or right or forward and reverse. You turn this knob. And it's got a little two smoker, a little two smoker like weed eater engine on it. And there's supposed to be a throttle here, but ours is ours is broke off. So let's take a look inside and see if we got any dinosaur cocktail in there. Nope. So let me get some uh, some mix, put it in there, see if this thing will start. Should be enough. Dinosaur cocktail. Now, does it have a primer? Oh, there's a primer missing. All right, we're gonna throw this thing up on the bench so we can work on it. Let's take this cover off. Kind of wedged in there. There's our air filter. All right, still good. Oh, now I can see. Well, there should be two lines. Oh, okay. The other line went into the tank. It's missing. So I'm going to need a short piece of fuel line and a purge bulb to snap back in there. purge bulbs I got right here behind me up in this box here there's a whole bag full of them I think yep Walbro branded they're calling it a primer bulb I've heard it's been called a purge bulb because it really doesn't prime it purges and if you know anything about these it's like a one-way it's got a check valve in there so one direction it draws fuel the other one it squirts it out so what I normally do is put squeeze it and put my finger over one of them see now that's it's holding so this is the one that sucks the fuel and this is the one that's going to shoot it out. So I squeeze it and try it. That's no, not that one. Or I can push on it and you can feel pressure, but it's better to do it this way. So, since this fuel line here is coming off the carburetor, that would be the one that's going to draw the fuel. Because we have a fuel line here that's going into the tank that's got the tank filter on it and that's going to go through the carburetor and this is going to pull the fuel through the carburetor and then when you push on it again this is going to deposit it back in the tank so it like recirculates it alright I'll be right back alright I got me some 530 seconds fuel line this is a true blue fuel line from Stenz this is supposed to not shrink up or whatever like the like the yeller stuff but I don't know a lot of this stuff is just garbage but it's pretty decent so I'm gonna shove that in that in the hole in the fuel tank I'm gonna spray a little uh little of this croil on there. That might help it. It's just a return line, so it doesn't have to go in real far. That should be good. Alright. And then I'll cut it back here. 
feed it through. Is this other one going to be long enough? I'll stick it on the long one. And you know while I'm at it, where is this other one at? All right, that one is down here. I'm going to replace that other one, too. I'll make it longer. There we go. Plus, it's hard as a carp. I'll make it a little longer. It'll be easier for me to stick it on the bulb. And then I'll stick the other end on that fitting on the car on the carburetor. Okay, now I got dinosaur mix in there, so let's see if it'll if it'll pump up. There we go. All right, we got fuel. All right, so let me snap this in here. Got to click in there. What's the matter? It ain't clicking. One side clicked. Let me try the bottom first. Oh, I see. All right, I gotta flip it around. I see what I'm doing wrong. There's a little, there's a little notch right here, and that notch has got to fit in there. So all I gotta do is just give this a twist. There. Now it's, now she snapped in. All right, so let's choke it. And let me get around you and give it a tug and see if this thing will start. This is the kill button here. Woo! She wants to fire. She's licking off. Woo! She's running and dying. need much so now we need a trigger now if you notice this knob here this has got numbers on it and what that does is that sets your torque so what it, it lets the trigger only go so far and that sets your torque so when you're trying to torque something you don't over torque it 
because it's gas powered. Because I'm like, what does this mean? I'm looking at this thing and I could see, let's get a look at this little wheel under here. See this little wheel? It's kind of on an eccentric, which means it's not totally in the center. So that's going to limit the travel of the throttle. And that's how you set your torque with it. That's how they figure it out. I think there's a channel, torque channel or something it's called, where they had one of these. And they've got some kind of thing of where they can they could test it and see how much torque it's putting out. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. I watched the video, but uh, yeah, they tested one of these, and I think they might have even tested one of these against uh, the Milwaukee battery powered one. And I think that, if I remember right, I think the gas power, this gas powered one actually put out more torque than that battery one. I could be wrong. Maybe you grass rats out there will correct me in the comments, but yeah, there's a video on one of these. So now we gotta find a trigger for one of these. And here's a phone number, Racine Railroad Products. But you know what I'm going to call? Not Ghostbusters. I'm going to call out to the wild. Ow, 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 ow. I need a trigger. I need a trigger. All right, let me see here. I got a bunch of these gas-powered drills here. There's a bunch of these out here that I got. Oh yeah, here's some of them impacts over here, more of them drills. Let's see this one here. That one's kind of been out here a while. Get rid of that one. What about this one here? Oh, here's a good one here. Here's some more of these drills. Oh, here's another one that's broke off. Here's a code. Oh, that must be the cover for this one. That one's. Oh, I don't know about this one's kind of broke. I don't know. Probably this one. Well, this one's all there. All oh, the ropes are yanked out of it. And this is cover's kind of broke on the back. Let me see here. This one's missing a bunch of parts. Let's, let's take it off of this one. This one's missing a bunch of parts too. Alright, we'll rob it off of this one. See? All you gotta do is call out to the wild. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! I need a trigger! Take this one off of here. This one's kind of this one's kind of broke too, but it did work. Yeah, this has got a lot of broken pieces on it. So, let me get some super glue. Maybe we can just glue it together. Just kind of hold it for us. Because it was working. A 
once we screw it all together it should hold everything in place match it up there will that hold it? nope it just takes a minute for it to set up alright there's that that goes in there I believe that fell out. Here's the other side. And this looked like it was broke here. Maybe I should have bought the Phil Swift Flex Seal brand of super glue. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same formula. Phil. Wonder if he's related to Taylor. Phil Swift and Taylor Swift. I bet you that's that's her dad. She got all that Flex Seal money. spot there. There's a little spot there, I miss Phil. I mean, Taylor. I mean, Taylor's dad. I mean, there we go. I just got to get it to set up. Sticking on my fingers. Alright, well I'll stand here for 10 minutes. And... Until it sets up. All right, well, it's holding together. So now I gotta get that in there. And then get it down that little channel, the cable. There we go. And voila, and then it sits up against these hollow head screws act like stops. And now I gotta drop one of these nuts in here. And I can put this on this way, right? Is that the way it goes? Get that screw out of there. Yeah, it's got to go like this. I guess I could call that company and find out if I can even still get this. But I got a bunch more of them things out there. So, these are mine. This isn't a customer's. I guess when they switched over to battery, these were just lying around. They no longer needed them. So, uh, they were just going to scrap them. So I ended up with them. Tighten that up.
turn it a little. So when you push that down, see how it restricts the trigger? That's full throttle. Then I push it down. And then this part of the trigger here goes into that slot. And then when you turn it, you know, it, it very slightly restricts the, watch the lever right here as I'm turning it. You'll see it restricts it. That's your torque. And then I guess this would be full torque. All right, so that's good. Temporary fix. I could always uh, put a bunch of my uh, HV350 on there. So this one's pretty cannibalized here. I mean, I'm sure it's probably still good. It's got compression. Got a bunch of these. You saw how many I had out there. And then this is the only socket I got. This inch and five sixteenths. That little ring on there. Uh, excuse me. That little hog ring. Doesn't really hold it on there. I don't like them hog rings they put on impacts. They wear out in the sockets. I like when they put the little, little ball in there. I don't know if this had it or if there was something you could shove down through there to hold this on there. I don't know and I really don't care. stupid hog ring thing. We don't need it. I don't care if it falls off. All right, let me put this air filter cover back on. And then we'll see if we can find something we could, we could torque to. We could put the torque into. The torque test. Terrell's torque test. You heard torque fest? This is Terrell's Torque Test Fest. Welcome to my test fest. All right, let's find some. Let's go back out in the scrapyard. Find us some. All right, I went out in the junkyard and I found this blowed up twin cylinder brakes and scrap them. And this nut is an inch and a quarter. And this inch and five sixteenths, so it's a sixteenth of an inch bigger. But let's see if uh, if this thing will snap the uh, end of the crankshaft off, or if it'll just spin that motor around. So let's let's put that torque setting on there. So let me see. Oh. Which one is the... So three is the least amount of torque. And then we'll go to two. Then we'll go to one. And then we'll just go full throttle. And see what happens. Yeah, I gotta turn that a little bit to get in there. All right, let's see what happens. Thank <laughs> you.
took something. They were put in a vice. What do you think about that? Huh? I don't know. Maybe we'll hook, hook something on the end of it. Gotta hold it. I'll figure something out. Give me a minute. Well, I got a pipe wrench on there. Round number two again. snap the end of the crankshaft off. So you know what that tells me? That crankshaft's wrong. This thing's powerful too. Wonder if we can get that nut off. You know what that'd be good for? Like semi-tires. So here's a conventional half inch Ingersoll ran impact wrench. Let's see if this will take it off. Trying to beat it on there. Man, I was hoping I was going to snap the end of this crankshaft off. Nope, that ain't coming off. That thing's on there tight. Take that to your local shop. Say, hey, can you get this flywheel nut off? Because I can't. Oh, people throwing screwdrivers at me. All right, let's put it in reverse. Maybe started. Torque fest. See what happens when you use the wrong size socket? <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't snap. I figured since this is undercut here, I figured it would snap that off, but it didn't. So that's wrong. And this is a powerful tool. Like I said. The only use I would see is maybe somebody that's 
out in the field that would, uh, you know, change in a tire or wheel on a combine or something where you can't run airlines and stuff or on the side of the road, semi truck or grain truck, get in there and zip all the nuts off a wheel. But there you have it. The vessel, one inch, gas powered, impact wrench. Bet you a lot of you grass rats probably didn't even know they had that. Gas powered drills and gas powered impact wrenches. And then some of you are like, oh yeah, I know how about that stuff. Yeah, I used to work for the railroad. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. So, grass rats, if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, then subscribe. Check out our web store. Got the new Halloween tees. And no, this doesn't glow in the dark, but it, it's like glowing on me. And when you put one on, you'll have that glow to you. People will be, oh man, look at you. Man, did you do something to yourself? You look different. You got like a glow about you. It's my new tarot Halloween shirt. Check out all the other stuff we got. Follow me with your gas-powered impact wrenches on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! One-inch gas-powered impact! Man, is this thing heavy. I weigh like 50 pounds. I got a scale around here. Let's weigh this thing. We'll put that in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the scale. We're gonna weigh this thing. All right, let's see what this baby weighs. No, oh, not too bad. 40 pounds. I must be getting old. Oh, I see this. Oh, there's more stuff missing off of here. Oh, we got some loose screws here. It looks like there's a little bracket that might be missing. I have to look around on, the, on one of these other ones. Yeah, these screws are loose. Or this plate. That plate broke? Nope. Just loose up. That wasn't good. Leaning it up on there. That's right, still good. Oh yeah, a little bracket right here. It's missing off of this one. I don't know what it does. Oh well. It works without it. 40 pounds. I'd like to be lugging 40 pounds around with you all day long. There's your dinner. Well, I think I got it fixed this time, Junior. I replaced every gasket, every seal on this engine. Then I went ahead and sealed it with this industrial strength sealer. Take that, Phil Swift. Don't you think you went a little overboard with the sealer there, Pa? Is this thing even gonna run with all that on there? Oh, it runs. I took it out back and mowed the grass with it here at the shop, and it's been here for over a week, and it has not dripped one drop of oil. So it's all good. You can take it back to that lady. All right, good. I don't want to have to mow that lady's grass again. All right, I'm gonna go take it over to her. All right, Junior. All right, well, it's all sealed up now. We changed every gasket, seal, everything we could think of. We used an industrial strength sealer on it. So we can assure you, it will never drip again. Okay, well, if it does drip again, somebody's gonna die. Uh, uh, okay, well, I got, 